that's the next part in the demonstration of the laser uh, and I got not many comments even though there were a lot of people viewing the last videos even YouTube offered me to use this now for advertising and I'm be being paid for <laughs> advertising with the biofield on YouTube so there's a lot of interest the only answer I got, Dolly, uh, the only uh, suggestion how this biofield thing works is by capacity. So, but of course it's not capacity. Capacity, there's no capacity meter that could measure anything from three meters distance. I mean, these kind of capacities that are possible in such a setup. There is some capacity, but nothing that could transmit for three meters. Now, I'm not saying like any of the other people out there that there is any new form of energy involved, any new form of biofield that has energies that has, have not been uh, detected until now, be it scala or uh, morphogenetic or alpha waves and beta waves or whatever. It's nothing, I don't think there's anything really new in form of energy involved, but the setup is made in such a way that we can actually see energies that are always around us in our body and around us, and we can see the interaction of those energies, and that's a completely new step, and even those many companies who do some uh, neurofeedback, it's all about measuring, because our culture is about diagnosing and not so much applying, because Applying in medicine means to give drugs. So in the alternative field, it's just about the same. When you see neurofeedback, it's used to diagnose or to evaluate something, but it's not being used to actually use those frequencies for treatment. And we have frequencies in our body. There's no question. I mean, there's, there's no no doubt. Even so, maybe some doctors have not even heard about it. But you can just use, and this is a $40 multimeter you get on Amazon and uh, you put it on voltage and then, then you can see this uh, very simply you just go into your mouth for example you hold one side with your finger put the other side here in your mouth and you have 70 millivolts for example in other places you have up to 200 millivolts if you have a few different uh, metals in your mouth from from the doctors, from the dentists who don't know anything about physics, then you have a very powerful battery in your mouth, very close to your brain, a brain that works with voltages that are much smaller than those 70 millivolts. So can you be surprised that our amalgams, our metals have any influence on our brain? Of course, it's, it's no wonder. Uh, this is just the basics. So, now I show you the really most important part of the core uh, of the laser bioregion system. And of course, that's the treatment part. So, now, the first thing you do is um, take the cat off your foot pad because we don't want his frequencies to be part of it. You see, and it sticks to his feet, which is another reason <laughs> why we actually have to make a label for those uh, fabrics that keep them out of the reach of your cats. You see what happens? It's a very sensitive fabric <laughs> and uh, that's the only thing, I mean it does not hurt the function but it hurts a little bit the look if you have the cat uh, scratching on it. Okay, now the, the main aspect of the laser, as I said, is the uh, ability to treat. What I showed you with the bio uh, field is of course interesting and you can actually treat with frequencies from a distance. But that's, that's another aspect that will more develop in the future. 
here I show you now how you actually uh, sense, record or apply the frequencies. And what frequencies are those? That's simply the eigenfrequencies of the body. I call them eigenfrequencies and eigen is a German word that stands for self, frequency of self. And uh, this is not a new word. If you put in eigenfrequencies in, uh, in Google, you have a whole set of explanations also on Wikipedia. It's, it's a general term of physics uh, that has been known um, that there are eigenfrequencies of everything in the world. And eigenfrequencies can be of a electric circuit or of an, um, a resonator, but for the body, for the human body, usually eigenfrequencies were not well, they were known, maybe they were known, some knew about them, but they were never applied, never used. And uh, now this is what I show you here. Eigenfrequencies can be measured, can be visualized, not like in old style bioresonance, where there was some, some talk about subtle energies or subtle frequencies that nobody could see. Because, not because they were not there or because it was too difficult to measure. No, simply because those devices were simply informational devices they had. When you open them, there is, there is nothing inside, just a few um, uh, LED, and uh, this was all 70s um, technology. Now, first is you have to decide where you read the frequencies. And we have all the possibilities here, for example, there's the uh, acupuncture electrode you can also use for here for the laser to read the frequencies, for example, in place like, and then now look at here this, the, the, the LED is here. Put them on my teeth, for example. Yes, uh, this is this is. I put them here on my teeth, and I usually generally use for the reference this foot electrode. But you have all the possibilities. You can. You can uh, put the reference on the feet, on the hand, on the head. The principle is always you measure the frequencies between two points. Without, with one point only, like those bioresonance systems that put you on a pad, for example. There's, a, there's no circuit is being closed. Of course, there cannot be any reading of any frequencies whatsoever. I mean, this would have been completely new science. <laughs> Those bioresonance, they put you on a uh, pad and then they say they read your frequency. It's impossible because for an electric or for any kind of reading, you need a closed circuit. You need both polarities. <laughs> it's as simple as this. So, but anyway, here I use often one foot pad as the re reference and then I have the other option here, for example, the, the, the point probe. I can use it here for, you can see here, I can use it for regular electrodermal screening points, the acupuncture points, or I can use it for measuring the electrocardiogram or the electroencephalogram. All this is basically inside here. You can measure this, you can see it here visually, and I will let you here in the back there as a monitor output. You can actually make it audible. And I will put an audible recording, for example, of my heartbeat on the on the web also. You have all the possibility of, of, of electrodermal screening, of electrocardiogram, on an electroencephalogram. So now we have different uh, probes. These are not applicators of putting energy, but these are also applicators that can read the energy. So one is here the acupuncture probe. Then we have, of course, the head electrodes. These are for animals also. You, they go through the hair, and this is like where you can go to the skin and any other point. But now we have also new applicators because this is a little bit difficult. You have to hold, hold it on one point, but here we want to do maybe continuous application. So, for example, this is our a wrist electrode and you put this, this is the conductive fabric, you put it like this and then just 
block it tightly. So here you are connected electrically. Now instead of this applicator, I can put in DM. You see this blinking? It's my heartbeat. And now I can increase the intensity. So to, to let you uh, understand a little bit the functioning. The first, the left knob, is just amplification. And here is a, is a main amplification, 1, 10 or 100. So now I have it in amplification of 10, which is good for anything reading the electrocardiogram. If you want to go and read the electroencephalogram, you have to go higher. You have to go to about 100. If you want to read frequencies right from the skin, you need only amplification 1. But you, will, you can see this immediately. Some people have a, like a very horny skin, very little conductivity, so you have to increase the amplification. Here is the main switch between 110 and 100, just like on a multimeter. And then here you have the, the fine tuning. Yes? And here you can put this on. This is the most simple application. Now I'm being getting a feedback from my own heartbeat. Imagine. This is the blinking of the light and this is this alone is very powerful. Then we have another possibility. Let's take this out. This is our head electrodes. Here you can go very close to the hand head. Then I'll plug this into the first is the, our general body field measurement point and also also here we have the heartbeat of course measurable here and here I would say for reading the frequency you have to experiment don't ask me what's the better one I can say the more practical one is to have this one here and then have the foot electrode as the reference. That's the most simple way to, to read the frequencies. And then set the, the, main, the main amplification that you have some frequencies here showing uh, some, some intensity showing up and then to the fine tuning here to, to adjust the total output. Then you know you are reading frequencies. Okay, so that's the part of reading the frequency.